So, hello everyone, and thank you for attending this talk, Back to the Failure, Did Your Physical Security Really Evolve in the Last 40 Years? So, I'm Simon Gersborg, I'm Pentester at Synactive, and a physical intrusion specialist. I do a physical intrusion on industrial site, my preferred thing, and also offices, and a kind of a target that, uh, that I visited. In this context, uh, include data centers, upper tier Cveso establishments, luxury logistics, that kind of things. Synactive on its side is an offensive security company based in France. We count around, we have around 170 experts and we do pen tests, reverse engineering, development and incident response. So just to situate the thing uh, for people uh, who may not be familiar with what is a physical pen test. So very, very broadly, it can be seen uh, from two different perspectives. From an audit plan perspective, it's just like a classical pen test, actually. But instead of trying to enter into your computer, we try to physically enter into your offices and facilities. It is a similar uh, legal framework and uh, the same objective of finding your vulnerability in uh, order to improve your security. And from a pen tester perspective, in particular in the context of uh, industrial facilities, it can be seen just like a kind of urbex actually, but with people still inside and legal and helpful. So just uh, only good things. So what we are here is a capture from a movie depicting an actual hacker from the 80s named Karl Koch. Here he's inventing uh, what he will call a Trojan horse to trick legitimate users. What he doesn't know is that on the, on the, other, on the other side of the line, there is another guy named Cliff Stoll uh, who was setting up what will be known as a honeypot to try to trick attackers. And it is very interesting because it is really the starting of this uh, cat and mouse game uh, where different, uh, between attackers and defenders which push, uh, which push the cybersecurity domain forward and develop fundamental principles such as defense in depth and zero trust. Now, on the physical intrusion side, here is another movie uh, from the early 90s depicting a fictional pen, uh, pen testing team. While an accomplice is uh, acting as delivery man and makes a send towards the receptionist, the actual intruder, in the, you can see in the background, act as a legitimate employee in urging the receptionist to unlock the dance style as he cannot access his badge. Uh, actually, such scenario would just work exactly the same uh, today, and in fact, even if it is an old movie from uh, another era, I can still relate exactly to most of the techniques that they use. Oh, to be frank, there, there was some uh, change between this period. For instance, there is a plot at uh, uh, one moment on the movie. They try to get their hand on one of on those, uh, those, uh, those old Stripe access badges. No, well, they would just have to go nearby the, the employee to uh, remotely copy their, duplicate their RFID badge. Talk about the progress. So, what really struck me uh, during my assessment is how, despite all the fancy stuff deployed to impress customers, partners, and also seat managers themselves, we can still, today, enter in so-called secure facilities using the same old, old, so the same old school techniques known for decades. So why is that so? This is a question we'll try to answer in this presentation. The most obvious cause uh, for this is, of course, when a seat manager does not really, t does not really care about the seat security uh, independently of the marketing discourse presented to the, to the customer. The goal here is just to cut cost, and the method is quite simple. You fully delegate anything security related to a third party company, and in case something bad happens, you just rely on their insurance. So, it works in terms of conformity, liability, but this won't help against brand reputation damage, intellectual property or industrial knowledge theft, and it actually does not even bring any guarantee that potential intrusion will really be detected and reported. We will see a concrete example of this near the end of this presentation. Another, another uh, point is that uh, what is what I call the endless loop of trust. The installer trusts manufacturers as he installs well-established well equipment with good security reputation and certification. The customer trusts the installer as he is the expert and he knows what he is doing. 
the manufacturer has to cover various use cases, so he trusts the customer to uh, read the documentation and tell the installer what are his needs and uh, expectations. So in the end, everyone assumes that somebody else took the security in charge, while, while in fact nobody did. And at last, there is a set of, uh, finally, a lot of false beliefs, which are the, which will be the core of this presentation. And uh, these false beliefs are exactly, in fact, the same that were heard where internet was becoming a thing. It is really just some reluctance or some fear about security, but we will see in detail what they are. So to present them, please welcome the old wisdom of legacy IT security. The first thing, for people remembering about a ROST file, I did not put any password as I used my IP address to authenticate, which in the physical realm translates into, I did not put any lock cylinder as I used my access badge to authenticate. Concrete example of this. Here you have a door, there is no lock cylinder, but that's normal because to, to, to open this door, you need, you need a multi-factor authentication with a badge and a pin code. So, what could be wrong? Oh, someone would be able to, uh, to force, uh, force open this multi-factor authentication system. Maybe by not using it at all. Here is how you open it. And for this, I just use this kind of tool. And it is not uh, even uh, really a pen testing tool, so, uh, since this kind of tool are just what is used on construction site to open the door when they are not uh, when, when they are not installed all the lock cylinder on a building in construction. So it's just something you just buy, uh, you, you just buy, and which is just widely available. So. What I recommend in this uh, kind of situation, if you need to keep a key-based access, uh, just install a secure lock. And if you don't need to keep a key-based access, just properly condense the lock cylinder. And for information, a cosmetic plate also is rarely a good solution. Next thing. I leave default locks since they are good enough. Some equipments, uh, you have to know that some equipments con come with well-known default key. This is actually exactly the same as with software, when you leave the default password on the software. And the same way, these keys can be uh, just also bought, uh, are widely available on the internet, and can be bought as spare part or, or, or on customer hardware store. And an attacker, you can expect an attacker to have a more or less large set of default keys. And which is exactly the physical counterpart of default of a common password list. We will see later in the presentation a concrete example of this. I left a crappy lock on this door since we never use it anyway. Game time. Uh, there is no reason that I'm the only one working here, so I will ask for your contribution on this. Uh, what you can see on the screen is a simplified representation of a secure facility. You can see there is uh, several security levels. Each security level is separated, is, uh, separated using um, an access control. There are also emergency exits, allowing uh, people to go out of the building in case of an emergency. And the goal here is to help the ninja to choose a path to access level 4. So please, people thinking that the ninja should go for the main entrance, please raise your hand. No, don't be shy. Maybe there are some courageous people here. Please raise your hand. A small hint, the site responsible think that the ninja should go for the main entrance. So don't be shy. Maybe there is one person, maybe, just, just for, for having one round. But, and the people thinking that the um, uh, ninja should go for the emergency exit, please raise your hand. Oh. Okay, and I think maybe you didn't write the sign, the sign correctly. It is written exit. It is an exit point, not an entry point. Who would enter through an exit point, actually? Nobody would. Or, to state it differently, no legitimate person would. Because it is exactly the point here. What, uh, people, what you may consider as an exit door might be considered by the attacker as an entry door also. So what you have to, uh, 
So what you have, so what you have to consider is not the use that you have of a certain door, but it is really the, do, the usage that a malicious person can have for this door. So if you are, so if you are in a context where you have a single door separating high, the high security level directly, for instance, for instance, uh, to the outside of the building, this door, such door should be considered as a high security, as a, uh, of, um, as a high sensitive access, and therefore that in such case, such door might warrant a bit more than a, tef, than a ten dollar lock cylinder bought in a nearby store, maybe if you don't want somebody to open like this one. Next point. Real life, uh, real life attacker don't exist. It's just fraud and marketing. Uh, we are not supposed to cut uh, fences, even fences such as uh, this one, but usually when there is a site uh, using this kind of fences, you don't, we don't need to cut it. Uh, usually we just have to go around the site and we, we, we usually find a uh, path already open uh, for the fences that somebody else already opened before. So we just have to follow the same path that somebody else Another example, uh, there was a site we identified a door as a, as a main, um, as a most practical entry for, uh, for this site. And manifest, uh, it seems that uh, when we discovered this door, in fact, we were not the first one to identify uh, this door as the uh, most uh, useful to, uh, to enter since somebody tried to forcefully open it uh, here using a crowbar. I all, uh, also, we, all, we also had a very interesting customer feedback. And a customer was warned by a government agency how they would enter if they, uh, if they wanted. So uh, the uh, seat manager raised the issue, but the management uh, just rejected, uh, rejected, rejected it uh, because why? Well, it's just what they say. The government people live, live in, in their world. It's not like it was really something that would happen in real life, you know. Uh, so the customer hired us, providing no context information, and we actually, to, uh, we actually identified the exact same path uh, as the uh, most easily exploitable, and we managed to get in and out without raising any alert. So this shows three things. Uh, this path is highly likely to be chosen by anybody wanting to get in, and you saw it yourself when you try to help the ninja to enter into the facility. Uh, it works effectively, it works and effectively allows to bypass a security, uh, all security mechanism of the, the site. And more, uh, more worryingly, I think, there is no way to determine if somebody previously used this path as it, raise, it raises no alert. There is also something we can see in the news uh, from stolen computer, from stance laptops stolen from our contractors, or a, sto uh, a story I, uh, quite a bit old now, but I really uh, like it, about a pair, a pair of mainframe stolen from the server room in uh, customs airport, in the, in the uh, customs server rooms in the airport in Australia. Also, various cases of vandalism, terrorism, targeting food, water, energy plants, public transportation, and so on. Uh, of course, um, uh, this more discreet actions such, such, as, such as espionage, prepositioning, and so on are rarely made public. Uh, we, uh, I also happen uh, to have someone in job interview whose previous job uh, and notably included uh, intelligence gathering from competing company. Uh, you have also be, uh, have to, you have also to be worried about a false perception due, due to weak monitoring. The fact that you do not detect any intrusion does not mean that they are known and that you are safe. It just means that you detect known. Just can't uh, make any conclusion, uh, more conclusion than that. And also, uh, be aware of the fact that as cybersecurity gains its maturity, physical intrusion may become more and more the weak point in your global IT security. So you can, uh, for yourself, if you want to play the help the bad guy to choose a path game, uh, choice A, uh, should he go for the hardened, test it, easily monitor cyber, the, and uh, possibly air gap network and so on, or choice B, just go for the untested, uh, loosely monitored physical accesses. 
Uh, next point, security systems are just to keep pe honest people honest. Let's take an example with encryption. I will give you a way to break any encryption system. It can be a strong, it can be weak encryption algorithm, strong encryption algorithm. It may it may even even be a future encryption algorithm. It will also well, always work. And even more, it is a trivial way, nearly non-technical. The thing is that any encryption algorithm have their key belonging to a well-defined key set. So all you have to do is just to iteratively test uh, every key of, of this key set, and you will uh, uh, you will eventually, with with 100% certainty, find the right key allowing you to decrypt your contact. With weak encryption algorithm, this process will take about a few minutes or hours. With strong encryption algorithm, this process will take a few billion years. But if you put the time factor apart, indeed. Any attacker who really wants to decrypt your, your data will always be able to do so. But the thing is that in real life, this time factor is precisely what will di distinguish a weak encryption algorithm from a strong one. And it is exactly the same with physical security. Any intrusion requires some effort in terms of tooling, training, time, financement, and human resources. So the physical security is just a way to raise this effort, uh, this, this effort to a desired level. And this desired level will heavily depend uh, on things like the asset you want to protect and also a comparison with similar targets. Next point. Ah, good security is too expensive anyway, you know. Um, an interesting case we had before uh, starting, uh, before starting um, uh, an intrusion, we always try to gather uh, more information as we can on our targets. Here we identified, uh, donc we try to gather all the inf this information online, and here we identified there is, uh, this kind of classical uh, gate uh, behind, behind the site. Uh, there, is a, there is a camera behind the tree. Maybe if we are lucky, the, uh, donc the, the, ga the gate is closed using a chain, Maybe if you are lucky, the tree is still there and there is still uh, leaves on it. So maybe it will create a blind spot. We might be able to jump over the, fen uh, over the fence. But it is still a very risky move because it's not some kind we can justify, uh, we can justify this move. It's not legitimate. So maybe it, it is a possible entry, but it may, maybe not the preferred one, but we just keep that in mind. When we arrived on the site, the customer had recently replaced this old gate by this huge monumental gate. So I pass the fact that the uh, gate drop down is exposed on the outside because in fact uh, this gate uh, already you, uh, was still using the default uh, lock, uh, the default uh, lock cylinder uh, from this manufacturer. So it's the default key that we happen to already have on our set of default keys. So we felt totally relieved. No more question, oh, we will enter on this site because we just have the right key to just officially enter into the site and even the camera just in front of us become our, our ally because we, we can just clearly show to the camera, I have the key to open and here you see I'm closing the gate. So since I have the key, I must be somehow legitimate to enter from this way. I'm not sure that I don't know how much they paid for this, uh, for, for this monumental gate, but I'm not sure that uh, having a huge relief for the attacker was the expected outcome of this investment. I installed a certified armored door with biometric authentication nobody could enter. Certifications are good, but not sufficient. Uh, generally, they do not, uh, do not take into account uh, several factors such as aging, installation details, uh, uh, your environment, maybe there are some uh, other ways to, to go in, and they rely on standard, uh, standardized method uh, design to be able to compare uh, similar products. But, uh, for instance, uh, this method, uh, most of the tools that you are using uh, to uh, do a uh, penetration, physical penetration assessment uh, do, not, uh, do not belong to the tool they use here. 
A concrete example for this. Uh, the customer was quite, uh, quite proud. He, he has uh, 50,000 armored uh, euros armored door with a 12,000 biometric multi-factor authentication access control. Would you manage to open it? Uh, B1, it will go quite quick. <laughs> so, what just happened? I use this tool, actually. Uh, this tool uh, is designed, to, as you can see on the picture on the left, to contract the latch. You can, it is a triangular piece you can see on the right. And by contracting the latch, it allows to free and unlock the door. On secure, on secure locks, the latch, the latch is not alone, it is accompanied by the dead latch. The dead latch is, um, is the thing you can see on the, on the bottom. Uh, it's used is to detect when the, when the door is closed and to lock the latch in place in order to prevent uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, exploitation to open the door. The thing is, on this door, the lock was, was uh, aging, it was becoming old, and the dead latch was not functioning properly. Maybe the lock ne uh, needed to be replaced, or maybe it, it just needed to be uh, some lubricant, I don't know. But the dead latch was not functioning properly, making this lock uh, vulnerable again to this kind of exploitation. It is not something that you will see for visual ins ins inspection. It is not something that you will see uh, for a conformity audit, but be sure that uh, since it is a low cost, easy and discreet attacker, it is really from uh, in, in the top three of the attack that an attacker will, uh, will test. So the thing to remember is that certification shows that what a device can provide but it does not necessarily show what it actually provides in your context. Uh, there is also a point about the vendor's discourse. This will protect you against all EVs and intruders, 100% guarantee. Stacking always more security devices is not the best solution. In particular, if they do not fix your weak points, uh, your weak points will just remain the same, meaning they do not actually improve your security. Even worse, uh, poorly chosen equipment might even lower your security posture. You just saw it with the example of the gate, where the customer paid a large amount of, uh, of uh, money to put uh, this monumental gate, and in the report, we just uh, say them, uh, just put your chain with the with the padlock back on this because uh, it was still better than what you have now. I have an intrusion detection system and vigilant employees. An intruder will certainly be noticed. There is always a wrong perception about intruders trying to hide themselves so nobody can see them and so But actually, the best way to not be seen is just to act in plain sight. Uh, for instance, here uh, we, um, we just brought a picnic. It was a bright and sunny day. So when we entered into a secure facility, we just brought a picnic with my colleague and we just installed ourselves right in front of the main building in order to see what was happening inside of the security secure area, what, what, what were the movement of people, and to make a plan how we would enter to the building. Uh, also, uh, just put an helmet and an high visibility vest, and, I can, and you can physically cut through uh, your, uh, the, the perimeter defenses. The point here is that people don't expect an actual intrusion. Intruders just, so intruder just have to show them what they expect to see, and you're good to go. Also, cameras are mostly only forensic tools. That's something people all, uh, often forgot. They are not actually really detection tools. For instance, we could easily uh, pass one hour picking a, lo uh, a lock right below a camera without uh, being ever disturbed. And also, alarms as any uh, alarm system you have also on computer raising, uh, raising alerts, they are only good as the people behind them. Speaking of people beyond the alarm and the guards, we already pay a, sec a security company to handle security, so I don't have to worry, they are professional. Um, first story, 
I will, uh, I will tell some actual quotes that uh, we received during, uh, during our assessments. So first of all, a small company, a remote security contact. Uh, our colleagues were trying to enter into a server room. Uh, they, what they didn't know is that at 6 p.m. the alarm was armed automatically. So at 6 p.m. everything was starting to ringing, shouting. They are uh, gathering all their tools, uh, hurrying up out of the corridor and came face to face with a manager. The manager was on the phone with the security company and what happened? The manager told the security company, oh, I see them. Don't intervene. They are normal people. Please define normal people when there are people running out of your server rooms with your hands full of peaks and locks and okay. Another story, another place, this time a large seat. During the debrief, after a successful intrusion, the seat manager was astonished to not find any open alert. Uh, if not the camera, uh, movement detector, door opening sensor, at least the fact of using an emergency exit should have left a mark. He finally found the alert, closed by the security guard with the following motive. Alert closed, uh, nobody was there upon my arrival. Uh, intruders are gone, problem is gone, let's, let's just close the case, nobody will notice anyway. Again, a large sight. The guard stumbled upon us during his round. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, we just dismissed the guard in terms of, oh, we are from the headquarters inspecting the door. Here, there is a door which is not properly locked. It is not a normal situation. We'll have to report it. And my colleague even added, oh, it's even be dangerous, you know. And the guard uh, exposing excuses, explanation, and we were all good, good to go. But the story does not end here. One hour later, we are in an even more odd place, even for legitimate employees, and we are the guard approaching. We decide to stand still and see what happened. The guard had enough time to think about of our story, to check it, see that our names doesn't even exist in the, in the company. And suddenly the guard pops out from the door. Ah, there you are. I raised the issue regarding the door, so it will be fixed. And thank you for your work. You are doing a great, great job. Continue like that. We could have been really anybody. So, Things to remember from this presentation, uh, just quite simple, you just should apply the same uh, best practice for physical security you already do for decades in cybersecurity. There is just no need to reinvent the wheel. Don't assume that some, or hope that something is secure, just test it. You don't put a seat in production without testing it. The same thing in physical security. And to improve security, nothing to invent here again, just a standard PDCA loop. You test, you find your, weakened, your weakest point, you solve, then you retest, you find again weakened, uh, weakest point, and here you, uh, you gain maturity and improve your security. So, thank you, and don't know if there is a bit of time for one question or two, I don't know. Good work, thank you for that, keep doing that. Any questions? Um, I would like to hear your comments on these uh, smart buildings that we now have where that are uh, equipped and controlled with uh, protocols that are defined 20 years ago, like BACnet and stuff like that. Protocols which, for instance, can open the exit with a single UDP packet. Uh, do you think they are improving the security of the buildings or do they make it worse? So have you, have you played with them already? Uh, so for, for, for everything that is uh, really um, for, uh, electronic access and so on, it's really a, another topic. Yeah, I just wanted to cover really the basic things. If we are, if we need to try to uh, to resort to more a bit more advanced technique, it means that there is at least 
some bases of security. Here, I just wanted to cover uh, techniques that even uh, an opportunistic attacker can just exploit. So, uh, for all the electronics, there are indeed a bit uh, large issues regarding legacy, regarding compatibility. There are also specific bypasses also, also, also existing. It is just voilà, other thing, and as other thing, it comes with its own set of vulnerabilities. Okay, I am not seeing any other hands, so... Ah, maybe here, I see, if I think. Where? Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, just wondering, uh, if you want to do some uh, long-term intrusion in an IT system, for instance, uh, the idea would be to get inside the server room, for instance, but to make sure that your intrusion remains and detected either several days, months afterwards. Uh, is it usually the case when you get in? I can see that you can get in very easily, but as you were saying, for instance, cameras are used, are used as forensics. Uh, was there at some point in your intrusion test, is, this, is there this factor that maybe at some point people will realize? Uh, there, is, there is really a difference between being detected and raising an alert. As you saw, when the, for instance, the last example that uh, was, we are, where the guard came at us, clearly we were detected. For instance, oh, when the guard closed the case, we were detected. But no alert was raised because of various reasons, because it will be, it will generate too much bureaucracy to handle this and, uh, the guard don't want that, or because we just, uh, uh, we just, uh, were, were able to, uh, somehow uh, make people think that it's normal, just, <laughs> I'm just passing by, just, uh, don't, uh, don't worry about me, I'm just passing by again, goodbye, and voila. So it's really, the, the key thing is here. De uh, being detected, I think it's uh, something that can be accepted, and the goal is not to be uh, not to be uh, not detected, but just to raise new alert. And just as a final well, thing, oh. for instance, in the case where they said, "Okay, your security people, I understand, they have a good day," uh, was there any situation where two days after they? Um, you get a call, for instance, by saying, hey, uh, there were some guys from headquarters and we realized that there was no guy from headquarters, so was it you? I mean, uh, that's, was there that this was, kind of thing? That was precisely also why we uh, choose when the guard was coming in just to stand still and try to keep our thing, because one hour later, uh, when the guard has finished his round and passed one hour with his colleagues in the, in the, in the, um, in the security center and so on, we thought that Maybe within one hour they have uh, they had enough time to think about it to realize that we did not we do not appear anywhere that uh, we there is no mandate that maybe some kind of strange hour for such kind of operation, but no. And so if after one hour they did not think about it, it is not uh, two days later. I think that the guard will say, "Hey, two days ago I saw somewhere maybe some no." <laughs> All right. Thank you, Simon. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.